the Snow White iBook G3, and the Core 2 Duo MacBook. The iBook was the solution that came out after the iMac and Blue and White G3. These were in 1999 as a clamshell, and then as the years came on, I believe it was 2001, they got this new polycarbonate body. Now, the black MacBook, or black book, is what replaced the iBook G4 line. Slimmer, widescreen, more ports, and more power. So, in this video, we're going to go over both of them. I had them both sitting here, so why not make a video of them? So, how did I get, the, get these? Well, the iBook I bought for 120 I believe. It was off of Amazon. It has a 700 MHz G3, 128 megs soldered on RAM. It had a CD drive, which you're going to have to take out and put on again, unfortunately. And a 20 gig hard drive. I have Panther 10.3.9 running on it, and in the trackpad burnt out on it. What I did was something shorted out on the motherboard, right where the little connector is. So, I have to use a good old USB mouse. But, now for the MacBook. I had a Toshiba laptop I bought from a friend. It needed a hard drive. Then one day I traded it. This was a few weeks ago with another kid at school. He wanted a Windows PC, so he got a Windows PC. Toshiba had a 2GHz AMD Turon. Uh, of course 64 bit it had also 2 gigs of RAM along with a 15.6 inch screen some ATI Radeon graphics DVD burner and that was about it so I traded for this MacBook it has a 2.2 gigahertz core 2 duo um, of course a 13 inch backlit display the super drive, which is on the side. It, when I got it, it had a gig of RAM, and I have 2.5 gigs right now. And the reason I can bump it up to 4, because I, I was going to put 4, but you need to have one PCI stick of, or not PCI, RAM stick of DDR2 PC5400. That's what it originally came with. Then I have 6400 RAM laying around, but you must have a 5400 module with it, 5254, one of those two. Um, 64 gig solid state drive. When I got this, it didn't have a hard drive. I took the solid state drive out of my gateway laptop, that was my main laptop, up until I got this. And this has Intel GMA graphics. And this was the late 2007 model, which got quite a few revisions for this model. And of course, it's black. See the Apple logo on that one fine. It's kind of hard to see it on the white one until it's actually lit up. So, let's get started. We're going to start out with the side comparisons here. The screen, the top of the screen for the iBook is right at the top of the MacBook. So, if you can get an idea how thick that is. One thing to go while I'm at it, the power adapters. This was a sp one that just came with it. The other one was like a... It was like this, but it didn't have the MagSafe adapter. And of course, this one for here. So, went over the width, or width, whatever. Now, I'm going to go ahead and stack these on top. Now, that's pretty thick there. I have an old CTX EaseBook 700 laptop. It's almost that thick, just as it sits. But looking at the top, the iBook is a little longer this way. And then, of course, you got about an inch and a half this way. Now, for the ports, we have 
the Kingston Lock, the 56k modem, 100 meg Ethernet, FireWire 400, two USB 1.1. We have our mini display port, or mini VGA, one of those, and our headphone port. For the MacBook on this side, we have the MagSafe, the Ethernet, it's gigabit. The, this is the mini display port. The FireWire 400 again. Two USB 2.0s. I believe that's input. And then headphone, the Kingston Lock. And on the iBook, we have some vents here. Going along the front, we have a metal latch for the iBook. The, um, the MacBooks had those up until. MacBook Pros had them up until the 2008 Uni body thing, but and then for the MacBook, it's just the magnetic latch. Some of the features in the MacBook were new for when the MacBooks came out. The MacBook Pros took the features over two years later, so the MacBook was defi definitely some of the changes that led for the MacBook Pro. Now on this side. We have our power adapter for the iBook, and of course our disk drive with the tray and the little plastic piece is missing because I had to replace the drive, but I'm going to just put the original CD drive back in here at some point. And then you can barely see it, but there's a super drive. On the back, for how they lift up, the iBook is a small little piece right here, and the MacBook, it's a lot wider. And you have vents on the outsides with the MacBook. So, opening these up, actually, there's a light. There we go. Even better. Of course, one's white. One's black. You have these little knob or little rubber kind of feet here. This one was off the gateway because it's missing the other, so it works for now. Then you have a little microphone there. The resolution on this is 1024 by 768, and this is 1280 by 1024. And this is a 12 inch iBook, this is a 13. So, a diagonal longer. For the iBook, we have our speakers up on the top. The MacBook doesn't have any speakers. They're back where the screen flips. Um, for the trackpad, we have a lot bigger single button thing here. We have a smaller one here, and it's wider. It's shorter. Um, power buttons are relatively in the same spot. Now, the keyboard. What's cool about the old iBook ones is you can actually flip them up. Actually, if I can get this. Had the little serial key there. But you have your airport card there, then you can remove this whole entire little assembly and get access to the RAM. Got a little screw there. I don't know what that's from. Oh well. Now, the MacBook Pros had keyboards just like this again up until the 2008 redesign. The iBook had a much spaced or much keyboard that was a lot spaced out. And this, they're called scissor cut keys and they're a lot easier to type on. Of course, my Apple keyboard there has them, and I have an Apple wireless keyboard of this model too, over on my other computer. For battery life, when I got this, this had about an hour, and it still holds a charge. Battery in this thing shot. But anyway, let's get to the boot up part. Set that down for a second. I got both the power things. Do a little boot test trying to make this video so I don't really have to edit it because I really don't want to. Okay. 
MagSafe. And get the mouse for the iBook. And One, two, three. Let's go desktop again. I'm trying to get Windows installed through Boot Camp through a flash drive, and refit didn't do too well with that. It's interesting. Before the screen on the iBook even turned on, it got to the login screen. I think the iBook will get to the desktop. But Just gonna go to the desktop on this one. Uh, no. Okay, it's finished. Of course, we have to use the mouse for this one. One, two. So, of course, Intel won that test. Still waiting on my book here. Oh, didn't know the first first time I've got that message. Well, let's go to about this Mac. Get that same one here. So, of course we have 10.3.9, 700 MHz G3, 128 megs built in. So, on this side we have 10.7.4, course line. 2.2 gigahertz core 2 duo 2.5 gigs of 206 or sorry 667 megahertz dr2 and of course macintosh hd is the startup disk macintosh and macintosh and i'm just doing a quick little overview of the dock we have finder safari which i found out once you disable javascript this thing flies on the internet we have microsoft and two rage i believe the Outlook for Mac, Messenger, Skype, Address Book, I think that's what it is, the yeah, Address Book, iTunes, iPhoto, Photoshop, CS2, iMovie, Word, Remote Desktop, QuickTime, Preferences, Application Folder, and of course Recycle. Now going on here we have quite a long list. We have Finder. I'll go ahead and do the zoom thing here. Launchpad, which is pretty cool. It's like the um, kind of the iPad interface, and you can use two fingers to swipe. So kind of cool. We have Mission Control, App Store, which is really cool. Dashboard, which was something they didn't incorporate till Tiger, which was after this. Mail, Chrome, Safari, because some things won't load up in Chrome, but they will in Safari. Safari, uTorrent, FileZilla, Sophia's Remote Desktop, 
Team Viewer FaceTime headrest book. And while I'm at it, this has a FaceTime camera. All this is that latch. Keynote, which is very cool. Pages, numbers, iCal, which another thing I like about this is it has a date down there. Preview, which I really don't use. iTunes, Photoshop CS6, Photo Booth, iPhoto, Final Cut Pro, iMovie, GarageBand, VirtualBox, C Cleaner, NTFS Mounter, so I can edit and, of course, do stuff with NTFS drives. Time Machines, some preferences, applications, documents, downloads, recycle bin. bin. Now, one thing that's a bummer about Panther is no support for WPA2, or also known as TKIT. I can't get it to work on here. It works fine on here. That's pretty much the overview for both these Macs. For Geekbench on here, it had over 3,000. This was like last week result. On here, I can't remember. It was somewhere. It's definitely higher than 300 because my Power Mac G3, blue and white down there, which I don't know if you can see it at all, got like 200 and something. That's pretty much it. And one last thing we can do: shut down all races too. Might as well. This is both the Mac video. Shut down. And of course, shut down. Then one, two, three. And of course, the MacBook's dead. And then the iBook's done as well. So that was the video comparison, just kind of overview of the two Apple computers, MacBook that evolved from that, and what makes them different. That's pretty much it. I only made this video because it's quick, and I had everything right in my hands, whereas if I was going to do something for my desktop, I would, of course, take it and put it up on the desk and take off the cover and everything, which I'll have to do at some point. So I'll talk to you guys later, hope you enjoyed this video, and look for more videos.